third best shooting guard of all time. Wade has cold in his prime, huh? But he was never better than Harden. But wait, that's not that's not the bad part. That is, are y'all ready for some spine tingling cringe? Wade could not get his team out of the first round of the playoffs until LeBron came to South Beach. Never was a NBA MVP candidate in his career. Not hate, oh, huh? What are you talking? Oh my goodness. Not hating on the guy, but when it comes to him and Harden, it's no comparison. Sorry, bro. I fucking hate NBA Twitter. Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! So just so y'all know, that was not the last of the uh, Wade slander. That's not the last that you're going to see in this video. But I would say it's the worst. First of all, James Harden, and you guys know I just did a Twitter police for James Harden, so I'm neutral. But fam, he has not accomplished anything to be ranked over Dwayne Wade. That's crazy. But this just got so stupid so fast. He was arguing that Wade could not get his team out of the first round without LeBron, which I'm not going to play dumb like I didn't know what he meant. He's talking about the team. He's talking about like the 09 team, the ones right before LeBron came. Obviously not when he went to the finals and before that. But do you know why that doesn't make sense? It's because the team that Dwayne Wade was playing with was not even close to the roster that was there when LeBron James and Bosh came. It all changed over that summer. That's such a simple fact that nobody gets. Or not that nobody gets. This is just something people say when they actually were not watching basketball back then, but they came afterwards and other pushing narratives. Like, this is just facts. Look at it. The team that won 47 games before LeBron and Bosh came, there were eight players that were on that 2010 team that were not on the 2011 team. It's not the same team. But let's back it up even further. Let's take it back to 2004 before Wade had Shaq or LeBron. That team made it to the second round of the playoffs. Saying Dwayne Wade was never an MVP candidate in his career? You could have just said you weren't watching basketball in 2009. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. If you weren't watching the sport, you weren't watching it. Like, whatever, man. You had other stuff to do in life. And they were actually having an argument on this thread. The guy who tagged me brought up the fact that Dwayne Wade had a finals MVP and that he was an all-time great defender. This guy's counterclaim was that, oh, Iguodala has a finals MVP. That's nowhere near as impressive as a league MVP. You know what? I actually agree with that, but it's the wrong context here. Bringing up the fact that Iguodala has a finals MVP in relation to Wade having a finals MVP, those are two totally different things. Wade's finals MVP came by virtue of one of the greatest finals performances of all time. That's, that's a big, big difference from how Iggy won his. I do agree with the sentiment that a regular season MVP is worth more. Just because you have to go through an 82 game season, you have to hold consistent for that long. Danny Green, he, he would have had a finals MVP if, they, if the uh, 2013 Spurs won. So I agree with what he's saying, but terrible context here. Oh, but this second part kills me. He also says, Wade never got honors as a first team all NBA. Come with facts, not opinions. It's just like I said, if you were not watching basketball in 2009, you could have just said it. All NBA first team 2009, all NBA first team 2010. Oh my god, and that was after he said come with facts and not opinion. Oh, I'm cringing. My spine is tangling from the cringe. I get secondhand embarrassment when somebody confidently says something like that and it's factually wrong. Oh god. I don't mean to be a dick, but stop talking about basketball. That was the worst take we've had on this show so far. Your opinion was trash, and your facts to back up that trash opinion were all wrong. Oh, goodness. Next. Kobe beat this team that has four all-stars without Shaq. He had a broken finger on his shooting hand, a swollen ankle. So what was LeBron's excuse? Well, a good place to start would be that he did not have a Pau Gasol-type sidekick next to him. You can thank the Cavaliers for that one, who nixed a deal that would have brought them Amari Stoudemire literally like a couple of months before that series took place. But you know what? That's never my biggest problem with this uh, meme, I guess. That's never my biggest problem with this when I see it. It's not the fact that they're completely ignoring Kobe's team and the fact that they were way better equipped to deal with Boston. It's more so how misleading this probably is to people who were not watching basketball in 2010 or who didn't really know about the 2010 Celtics. Like, when you put them all in this picture together and you just say four all-stars, I kind of like to have a bit of perspective around it because this is not like four all-stars like the Golden State Warriors four all-stars. This is Paul Pierce after he slowed down just a little bit. 
This is KG after that knee injury or that knee surgery that he had in 09 completely slowed him down from what he once was. And this is Ray Allen actually in the year 2010 when he was not an all-star because you remember Boston was really struggling back then. And then I'm not going to take away from Rondo because this is actually, yeah, it's probably one of the best Rondos that the Celtics ever had. But still, use this responsibly because while I love the 2010 Celtics, that's actually my favorite group. That's my favorite season of being a fan. Let's not start to create a narrative like they were the Golden State Warriors of their time because they were not. As a matter of fact, I vividly remember in 2010, nobody believed in them until they did what they did in the playoffs. Before that, people were saying they were a second round out. I remember an NBA TV host or one of the people sitting on the panel said the Bobcats could beat them that year. Let's just not pump it up. This meme is considered contraband. Kuzma is greater than Wade of Miami and Bosch. Wade was so injury prone and really only had one good season with LeBron, Jesus that is misinformation. The rewriting of the Miami Heat Big 3 era's history is one of my least favorite parts of basketball this decade really. First of all, Dwayne Wade had an MVP type season in 2011. As a matter of fact, I can remember them discussing like was it possible that they could be co-MVP? Cause at a point it looked like LeBron and Wade could both deserve it. Would've won finals MVP in the 2011 finals. But then let's look at, if you look at it combined from 2011 to 2013, Wade's averages were 23 points, 2 steals, 5 assists, 6 rebounds, while shooting 50% from the field. Those are his averages from 11 to 13. Never averaged below 21 points in that stretch, and never shot below 49%. That is not by any means a player that was washed, or even close to washed. Was he flash after 2011? No, but we already know how that went. He purposely took a back seat. He let LeBron take over for the benefit of the team. And the worst thing that happened there was he was missing some games. I believe he missed, let's see, he missed 13 games in 2013, which is not that bad. Then in the lockout shortened season when a lot of people were getting hurt, he missed 17 games. And I think he had knee surgery in the off season of that summer. Either way, let's not make it seem like Wade was just never there and he wasn't a factor after 2011. To say that he only had one good season with LeBron, that's completely false. He had one super season with LeBron, then he had two more good seasons with LeBron. The only season you can really say was bad would be 2014. That's when he missed a ton of games and he only averaged 19 points. And then by the time the finals came around, he was just, he was done. That is the history summed up of Dwayne Wade's time with LeBron James. So we're really doing this now? Kyle Kuzma is better than Wade of Miami? That's how hard people are trying to rewrite that era. Kuzma, you know, he's improving. He's showing some improvement. Not saying he's a terrible teammate, but that's misinformation. And then to even say Kuzma is better than Bosch. No, he's not. But you know, Bosch really gets the worst of this whole deal when they try to talk about Miami. Because instead of giving credit for the role that he played and him being able to adjust his game to playing with two other ball handling stars, it's just looked at, oh, he had a total decline. Not gonna give him a pass for some terrible playoff games he had, like I think he had zero points in game seven of uh, 2013. Okay, that's on one spectrum, but let's also remember that in 2012, the Heat were fixing to lose to Boston because they didn't have Bosch that whole series. And that was a Boston team that kind of limped there. Jeff Green out with heart surgery, lost Jermaine O'Neal, like that team had lost all its depth for a team that was really aging. If they would have had the big three, I don't think that series goes any farther than five. But yeah, people just love to pretend that Wade, he just didn't exist after 2011, so there is that. James Harden is better than Kobe Bryant ever was. If you give James Harden a prime shack in the late 90s slash early 2000s, he'd have double Kobe's rings. Woke up this morning and all I see are angry Kobe stands being unable to handle the truth. Can't help but pity them. I'm sorry, what year was it that the Spurs did not have their best player in Kawhi Leonard for a closeout game on the road in Houston, yet they still were able to get it done and send Harden's team home? Speaking of that, has James Harden yet had a signature dominant series? in an important playoff situation? Like is there one series where James Harden just took over and it was critical to his team going deep? And okay, lastly, is James Harden dominant on both sides of the basketball? No, but because he can score a lot and because he has good playmaking ability, he would just automatically double Kobe's rings with Shaq. But see, I'm just having a hard time agreeing with the logic there because there were times where Shaq wasn't the one carrying the Lakers through. There was times where, like, do people just think LA never, they just never had a scratch on them, like every year was 2001? There were moments where the Lakers needed somebody other than Shaq to come through. And so I'm just wondering how it makes sense to make this assumption because if Harden does not play great defense 
and he also doesn't have like a signature dominant moment where he's just he just had that killer in him when they really needed it how do you just assume you take him and plug him next to Shaq and it's a winning equation for those of you that just assume you could plug anybody next to Shaq I would definitely recommend you go look at some of the playoff series that took place from 2000 to 2002 and some of the series where Kobe was arguably the better player than Shaq and it'll give you some idea of why they were actually so dominant, why the Lakers are a dynasty. Like for instance, if you just go look at when they stepped on the Kings in 2001, Kobe actually led the team in scoring in that series. It was 35 points a game on 47% field goal, not bad. 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.3 steals. Just do yourself a favor and go look at those. There's a lot of people falling for fool's gold out here. Speaking of fool's gold, there are about six players currently in the NBA better than Kobe, and we have to accept that. It's weird. That's why take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got. Oh man, this guy said six. The Kobe disrespect just gets worse every week, doesn't it? <laughs> I feel like this is one of those situations where I would have to break down Kobe versus each player. We don't have time for that today. But the only player in today's NBA better or greater than Kobe is LeBron James. It's that simple. I think this take has a lot to do with this generation that's so obsessed with offense. Because any player that you're going to say is greater than Kobe right now, he has to be able to inject elite offense and defense into his team for one. And then he's had to have actually led his team some more successfully. And then that success would have had to have been duplicated for many years. And if we just want to look at it in like a, a short span of time, how about a three year run like that? Kobe's 2008, I might do a video on that one day. Kobe Bryant's 2008 to 2010 run, that's very underrated. Nobody really talks about it. That was a very strong run though. But yeah, if we're using any kind of criteria, the only player you should even have in that conversation is LeBron James. Steph Curry is now on his third run with the Super Friends. His defense is not as terrible as people have made it out to be, but it's also not that good. The one ring that he has so far without the most stacked team in history came in 2015 in a series that they could have lost when they should have swept it. Look, with all due respect to Curry's run and how he's changed basketball in this short time and how it's played, Let's wait and see until he's on a regular human team what he can really do and, and I'm not talking about his basketball ability but as far as where he can take a team because the last time we saw him on a regular human team they lost. Yeah he was injured but Kobe routinely won when he had injuries. Like I said anybody outside of LeBron James nobody's earned those type of stripes. 